Greetings, scribblers. Kent Sean here. And today we're going to talk about one of the most important storytelling tools in a writer's arsenal. Scribblers, this is the big one. The white whale. The alpha and the omega. Where the buck stops and you fish or cut bait. Where the rubber meets the road and the metal meets the meat. The big kahuna that separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls and the... What is it already? Hey. Don't yell at me. Today we're going to talk about the hero's journey. This is a huge subject and there's no way I'm going to get to all of it in one video. So this here, this here is going to be a series. But as usual, before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss one raindrop in our riding monsoon. The hero's journey isn't a plot device or a clever outlining method like Snowflake or Save the Cat. Instead, it was something discovered like a fossil, or Jennifer Gray's original nose. Joseph Campbell, an American literature professor who, I would guess, didn't get out much, studied thousands of myths and stories and made the shocking discovery that no matter what era the stories came from or what part of the world, they followed a predictable pattern. Campbell went on to write a 10-ton book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces, detailing the movements and stages of these patterns. Oh, I should definitely read that. Hold your horses there, Sparky. I thought you said it was the white whale or whatever for writing stories. Yes, it is, but old Joel Campbell, he was an academic, writing for other academics. Trust me, scribblers, this was a hard read. So unless you have a lot of spare time and a willingness to digest a buttload of dry prose, I suggest another method for extracting all the story goodness Joe discovered without wanting to scratch your frontal lobe through your nostril with a coat hanger. Um, I give you The Writer's Journey by Chris Vogler. Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Chris, he took Joe's ideas and influenced screenwriters and directors to pay attention to the structure of the hero's journey. The result? Chris pretty much taught Warner Brothers, Fox, and Disney how to print money. Why does the hero's journey resonate so well with readers and moviegoers alike? Carl Jung, the creepy, brilliant psychologist, believe we inherit knowledge and images from our ancestors, and that the hero's journey mimics the epic struggle of humanity from tree-dwelling poop hurlers to the dominant species on the planet. But old Carl did spend a lot of time trying to talk to dead people at seances, so... For us wannabe writers, the hero's journey is a great guide to storytelling and can get us out of a hole when we're stuck. In the writer's journey, Chris Vogler breaks it down into a clear, concise, digestible package that anybody can understand. Vogler explains the stages of the journey, the archetypical characters the hero meets along the way, and how all these elements fit into popular stories. So here they are, scribblers, the 12 stages of the hero's journey according to Chris Vogler, and how they stack up against typical three-act structure. Here to read them for some reason is Bat James. The ordinary world. The call to adventure. The refusal of the call, meeting the mentor, crossing the first threshold, tests, allies, enemies, approach to the innermost cave, the ordeal, the reward, the road back, the resurrection, return with the elixir. Thanks, Bat James. In my next video, we're going to describe each stage in detail, and the one after that, we'll go into those archetypical characters I mentioned earlier. We might even do an extra one telling you how you can use the hero's journey to outline your story. But first, just so you know this hero's journey thing works, I'm going to read you a list of books and movies that follow the stages of the hero's journey to AT. So here we go, I'm going to read them to you right now. Moby Dick, Jane Eyre, Huckleberry Finn, Dune, The Matrix, The Wizard of Oz, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The Labyrinth. We miss you, Bowie. Where the Wild Things Are, The Goonies, Star Wars. Bow your heads. To Kill a Mockingbird, The Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, yeah, all of them. The Lion King, okay. To save time, pretty much every animated Disney feature ever. All of Greek mythology, all of Norse mythology, I can do this all day. I think we got it, Dad. Okay, one more thing before we wrap things up. I know there's some of you out there right now folding your arms thinking things like, real writers don't follow formulas. They create, 
out of whole cloth. I write what I feel. Structure be damned. Scribblers, if this is you, smack yourself. You're always making me hit myself. Aw, oh, come on, James. Just one more time. Fine. Scribblers, things have structure. It's how you know what they are. If you go into a store that sells chairs and you gaze across the myriad shapes and sizes available, you might notice they have a few things in common. They are made of something sturdy. They have some sort of surface compatible with sitting, etc. If they do not have these things, they are not chairs. The same holds true with the hero's journey. You don't have to follow the 12 stages exactly, but you might want to make sure you have most of those elements in your story. Readers may have no idea who Joseph Campbell and Chris Vogler are, but when primal elements are missing from your story, they know. Trust me. That's it for today, Scribblers. Please stay tuned for part two next Friday when we break down the stages of the hero's journey. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and please visit my website, kentshawn.com. Till next time, Scribblers, butts and seats, fingers on keyboards.